Um, thank you for the uh, introduction. I've been um, asked to try to answer a, a slightly complex question, I think, how to conduct high uh, quality research. I'll, I'll have obviously some uh, general remarks, but, but also use my personal experience uh, with this, this field. I have several conflicts of uh, interest. We receive research funds uh, from several companies, uh, but more importantly, I'm involved in uh, several uh, trial programs. Um, some of them have uh, been finalized. I, I don't think we can squeeze any more data out of the success trial. We, we have tried and uh, done our best. There are still data to be published from the, uh, the TRIS trial. Uh, the classic trial on fluid restriction versus uh, standard care, the pilot has been done. We are uh, seeking funding for a, a large uh, 1,300 patient trial. Uh, the super ICU on stress also prophylaxis in ICU uh, should randomize the last patient uh, mid-October and we should have 90-day uh, mortality results um, early next year. Uh, the eight ICU uh, program is on delirium and most likely a randomized trial on haloperidol versus placebo sponsored by uh, the intensive care unit in Kyiv. Uh, it will likely start recruitment in February, March. Hot ICU is an oxygenation trial, hot topic for hot ICU. Uh, start recruiting patients this summer uh, and be now being spread out to uh, potentially 50 ICUs in Northern Europe, uh, randomizing patients with a cubic failure to 8 versus uh, 12 kilopascal as uh, target. And I chair the, uh, the informal uh, trial group uh, that we have, which is uh, still active, not a lot, but it's, it's a good informal uh, forum, as I'll uh, return to. I guess I also have the, the uh, conflict of interest that I'm, a, that I'm a, a strong, strong believer in evidence-based medicine, but I think this pyramid uh, needs to be changed a bit. So I've added the red uh, text there. Uh, hopefully we should be able to treat our patients with uh, high quality data, data. Therefore, it's data from systematic reviews and randomized trials uh, with low risk of bias. But even the cohort data that we produce and sometimes have to use as our best evidence, they have to be low risk of bias. I, I don't think there is any excuse not to do everything you can as a researcher to limit bias uh, in every way you can. And for cohort studies in particular, there is a long, long way to go. Um, so that was my conflicts. Um, I'll cover these uh, points, um, it is very important to do what we do. There are luckily very good guidance out there to help us how to formulate the research question, build collaboration, get funding, and then go ahead, just do it. As I said, high quality research is extremely important. Uh, this can be read out of the uh, recently updated Surviving Cesspis Campaign Guideline, which is a, an impressive document. So many experts have issued uh, 93 statements, but as you see there, a minority only is based on high quality evidence, some on moderate, but the majority of statements are based on either low, very low, or no evidence. Uh, so that's a problem. Here are the uh, chapters of the recommendation. If you just take some that you may find important, you may be happy that some of them have sort of 50% of the statements have either moderate or high quality evidence to support them. But I think it's really worrying that some of the stuff that we think is really important, resuscitation and antibiotic for patients with sepsis is poorly, poorly supported. Um, so this has to improve. Um, and we have harm patients. Um, this is a systematic review looking at the RCTs done in critically ill uh, that 
found difference in mortality between intervention uh, and control group. 15 interventions uh, identified altogether, seven of them reduced mortality. That's good. Not so good. Eight reduced, uh, harm patients, increased mortality. And a lot of this stuff was interventions that we gave to patients. So by applying uh, intervention based on poor evidence, we have harmed patients. Um, this has to change, I think, and, and luckily, I, I think um, in critical care, we are, we are on a good run. We collaborate and we do RCTs, and this is, in my opinion, what's needed. We have to do more, actually, as many RCTs um, as we can uh, in a collaborative effort in all the interventions, and particularly those where we are um, in doubt. Easy said. Um, I think some may think that it's really, really difficult to do an RCT, and it may be for very different reasons, but, but the framework is now extremely well described that when you start out, there is actually cookbooks out there for you to help. So there's a very good statement paper on how to uh, write the protocol called SPIRIT. It's excellent guidance on um, the reporting of uh, the trial by consort. Uh, you can even steal uh, from others. Happy for you to pitch some of our stuff. We publish all our trial document in open access, so we share these. Every single trial document is to be shared with anyone, so there's free access on this homepage. You can open our SiteMaster file, pick any document, and copy paste whatever you want. You can take our ECRFs, see how we did it. Um, please do so. If you want an extremely detailed uh, description of what to do, there is a full catalog um, done by um, the ICH, uh, also called the ICH GCP uh, guidelines. Their efficacy guidelines here are numerous. There are more than 20 of them. Uh, extremely detailed description made by a collaborative uh, between industry and authorities. So as industry is involved, it's ex extremely detailed. Uh, and this, I think, is the, uh, the final cookbook of uh, how to do trials. So it's uh, easy to help. Um, if you want more sort of informal advice, uh, maybe more focused on investigator-initiated uh, Research, uh, I'm happy to announce that the SSAI will hold its first uh, course on clinical research uh, in Copenhagen in the first week of April, the days after Easter, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. The announcement will be made shortly, so watch out for the homepage uh, if you want to attend a uh, course on clinical research arranged by the um, SSAI. And hopefully this will be an annual event, uh, so there should be heaps of opportunities both to learn and to network uh, within Scandinavian anesthesia and uh, intensive care. There are other bits and pieces that are worth uh, reading, and, and this uh, handsome gentleman is uh, John Ioannidis. He's a professor at Stanford in meta-epidemiology. Uh, he became quite famous from the title of um, of this paper, which is actually quite technical, and, and it describes our uh, trouble with, with using p-values and um, why, therefore, the way we use p-values, uh, most of our research findings are actually false. Um, very technical paper, but, but still worth reading, in particular if you're interested in statistics. This, this is uh, an easier read. His most Recent flashy title, Why Most Clinical Research is uh, Not Useful. And I think this is a very important paper if you want to do uh, clinical research, and particularly if you want to do a trial. Uh, because there is a good description of what you should consider and what can be considered as high quality research, focusing extremely of the benefit of patients uh, and society. I mean, we are doctors, we want to improve the care 
uh, of patients. So I'll read out. Problem base. Is there a health problem that is big enough, important enough uh, to be fixed? Uh, has prior evidence been systematically assessed to inform new studies to do systematic reviews? Is the proposed study large enough and long enough to be sufficiently informative? Often it is not, so consider this when you design. Uh, pragmatism, does the research reflect real life? If it deviates, does this matter? patient center net does the research reflect top patient priorities? I think always extremely uh, important to, uh, to consider. Is it value for money? Is it realistic? Can it be done? Uh, are the method data um, and analysis verifiable and unbiased? So about transparency uh, in research. If you fulfill this, you will be unique because very, very few trials published today, even in major journals, uh, even some of the stuff that we do, do not fulfill all these um, points. But I think this should be a goal uh, for all of us and worth to remember. So formulating the research question, um, I think it's for us as doctors, it's, it's easy to see why how patients suffer, and therefore it should actually be easy for us to formulate the, the right research question. Look at the burden uh, you see, uh, both based on frequency, uh, but also severity, and then pick the research question to try to solve and reduce some of the burden for our patients. If at all possible, I, I think uh, patient involvement um, should be done more and more. Uh, our UK colleagues have, have done this and, and patients and relatives have other priorities. So the UK experience was that when patients got involved, they had other priorities uh, than the clinicians. The clinician focused a lot on technical issues, uh, blood pressure, cardiac output and stuff, but obviously patients uh, had concerns about uh, quality of life, delirium, uh, return to normal life, um, return to work, financial burden on themselves and the family. So, so I think the <laughs> involvement of, uh, of uh, patients and their families um, can be challenging, but extremely informative uh, to us. How do we go? Uh, the next one there is... I'll click through. Thanks. Um, the next one there, I think, was um, stuff we do a lot. So look, there are heaps of interventions out there w that we do every day for which we have doubts about benefits and harm, but we'd still do it because of tradition or ease or it's easier for nurses or us uh, or for the organization to do it. But does it matter to patients? Stuff where we harm patients, that's extremely important, has always been for the programs that, that we have looked at. Iatrogenesis is still a burning issue. There are still patients, I'm certain, that we harm. Um, in the, obviously not by purpose, but by applying interventions that have poor um, evidence support. And for society, I think increasingly we all feel this. There is a, uh, a demand and actually a, a also it's an opportunity to get funded f uh, to try to reduce cost for society and also I think we have an ethical obligation uh, because money spent um, in some patients cannot be spent in, in others. Um, so I, I think we should enter uh, a financial world as well in, uh, in research. Collaboration is uh, key I think. Uh, if you want to make a large trial that change uh, patient care you will need massive collaboration and the good part is that people are really nice. Um, the, uh, as long as you formulated the right question and have the spirit and the ambition to fulfill uh, your goal, everyone will help you. Uh, there's a very, luckily, a very philanthropic uh, still um, 
we have a very philanthropic community. Uh, so clinicians, both doctors and nurses in particular, are very, very eager to help out with research. If the question is right and if they can see realistically this, this can be done. So as long as we do it for the right reasons to the highest standard, everyone will follow and help out. Involve method experts early. This is essential. The flaws you make in the design cannot be uh, changed once you have done the trial. So involve these people um, early. Uh, they are more than keen to work with dedicated clinicians. They are more than keen to contribute to improved care and potentially in improved outcome. So again, as long as your research question is, uh, is good and your ambitions are high, it's quite easy actually to involve method experts because they obviously want to do uh, also high quality research to improve the care of patients. Um, we've had good uh, experiences in making research programs, uh, both obviously to build up uh, the better protocol for a trial, but also to build the, uh, the network. When you work together and produce results, see your names on papers together, have successes, uh, that builds the, uh, and strengthens the uh, collaboration and, and, uh, and the network, and it will show the uh, uh, authorities and the funders uh, and your colleagues that you mean business by this. Um, and at the end, you'll get a better product, I'm sure, by knowing uh, in build-up studies, surveys, cohorts, systematic reviews, what's out there to design the perfect pragmatic protocol to be tested in a trial. Funding is an issue. Um, I hear of colleagues who uh, employ fundraisers to write their grant application. I, I'm not sure that this is a good idea. I, I think you are the person who can do this best. You know all the, uh, the, the problems for the patient, the uncertainty in the clinical environment. Uh, the remaining part of the data, you may obviously uh, have insufficient knowledge about methods and, um, and statistics, but that's where you involve your team and collaborate early on with your team to write the grant applications to have a, a full and perfect uh, plan, uh, even with quite detailed methods and statistics to show the granting agency that you're you mean business and you can do this because you have gathered experts and these experts have contributed to a, your grant uh, proposal. One minute. Oh man. You have to seek several sources, I'm sorry, and often you have to ask the hospital or the university for backup because persistency is very much needed in funding. And it's in, at least in Denmark, it's an increasing problem that there are limited funds for uh, clinical research and clinical trials. Um, final slide. Just do it, I mean it. Aim high. If you aim high, everyone will follow. Collaborate. We have a very informal uh, group, uh, Scandinavian Critical Care Trials Group. This can be mimicked by others. We could include anesthesia and pain. Uh, steal from others. Trialists are, are very nice people. They will share. Uh, we had the, uh, our initial trial documents from the ANSIC CTG and the SAFE study. Uh, make no shortcuts. Involve the methodologies because they will keep you on track. When you say, ah, well, can we reduce the sample size a bit, they will say, no, 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 no. We have to do this at the highest of standards, and that's really important and will pay out at the end. Uh, be very, very patient, but importantly, have fun. It is a lot of fun. Remember this. Thank you.